Hey guys, I've been playing with iOS 9 a couple uh, more days now since my last broadcast and I have some cool tips. Actually, I think iOS 9 has more things in it than I even initially thought that, that are new. So um, I thought I'd share a few things and hopefully you will share some of your uh, favorite iOS 9 uh, uh, tips as well. Uh, I wrote a blog post about what I think the best new feature is, the very best new feature. And uh, <laughs> hello to everybody joining. Thanks, thanks for coming in. Um, hopefully you got a what, iOS 9, you're using it. Maybe there's something that you, you didn't know it could do that you'll share. Uh, at learninginhand.com, <laughs> oh, hey, Chris, uh, I, I wrote this article. I think it's the, the very, very best new feature. And I didn't even know that it was even happening in iOS 9. Uh, it, I hadn't kept up like I had iOS 8. I had the developer build here. I just got it uh, uh, all on my own. <laughs> Alexandra, hello. Hello to you in Miami. <laughs> Alexandra, do you have iOS 9? <laughs> uh, I see Felix is here. He's a tech director for a school that has one-to-one -one iPads. Uh, how long will you wait before you update your school iPads to iOS 9 is what I'm wondering. Um, it doesn't seem like there's uh, too many things that have gone terribly wrong for people. I know sometimes it's a good idea to, to wait uh, several days or several weeks or wait until 9.01 comes out because there's, there's bound to be some problems. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, the number one thing that I found was the, <laughs> after the guinea pigs. Uh, so Felix says, uh, I'll wait a few weeks. So, so will, uh, so will Ray. Yeah, I, that's a great idea. Play with it yourself, figure it out. But this feature that I'm about to show you, I think is the number one thing for schools. It, it, it's super great news. Uh, and it brings the iPad closer to being a real computer. <laughs> uh, oh, Chris just said that updating her card of 20, it only took 25 minutes. Uh, that's nice uh, that the upgrades take take shorter and shorter time. I mean, remember with iOS 6, we had to, maybe it started with, with Phi or 6, it ended, but we had to sync through iTunes and it was a huge mess. Uh, this is a lot better. So my, my number one tip is when you have uh, a, 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 a button to upload files online, whether it's in Edmodo or Schoology through the web, through Safari, uh, Google Classroom or Padlet, or in this case, uh, this is drop it to me, this is, this is so cool. I was so happy when I saw this. When I click the button to uh, select to upload, not only do I get uh, a place for my photos and videos, or, you know, where you can take your photo library, but now they include update or uploading from your iCloud Drive, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrop, uh, OneDrive, and you can even customize this list. I know Instashare is in there, and I'm assuming other apps will be able to do that this too. So that means that Students can turn in PDFs and uh, other files. They can turn in stick around puzzles uh, through, uh, through forms. And the this, this same file picker is available in the mail app as well. And it, while you know, this doesn't seem like a glamorous feature like a new app switcher, which if we wanted to take a look at that, you know, we can, I don't, I don't even know if I like this or not, slide through my apps uh, like that. It's not as glamorous, but it just means so much for schools that have, uh, you know, things that you want students and teachers to be able to exchange files more than what are just, uh, you know, videos and pictures. So, so this is this is a big deal. It, it reminds me, and when iOS six came out, I was so excited <laughs> that we could actually upload pictures and photos or and and uh, and movies, uh, because before that we couldn't even do that. It was kind of the dark days. So, so that's my number one best feature. What are some things that, that you guys have uh, discovered in iOS 9 that, that you really like or, or things you've read about, maybe you're still, still upgrading, that you think are, are uh, noteworthy in iOS 9? Bigger folders, yes. So uh, on an iPad, I think there's so much more on an iPad than... than uh, then, um, I mean, so here's, here's my, my toddler folder for, for my kids. They're outgrowing these apps now that I look at them. But now we have four by four on each page in a folder instead of three by three, which just makes sense on, on our iPads. 
So, so that's a neat thing to see. Um, I'll figure out how to turn off Siri suggest, right? Because when I, when I move over, um, Siri suggesting some apps, I don't want to sign into the iTunes store right now. Um, so, and putting in news. So I'm guessing you can turn this off somewhere. Uh, and if you, if you don't know where something is, this is a neat feature in iOS 9, is in the settings app, if you scroll to the top, you can actually search settings. So if you're not sure where the series uh, uh, settings are, just type it in and you have uh, some in your list. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I saw another tip go by and I was trying to uh, read it so if I miss yours, don't, uh, don't feel bad about uh, uh, replaying it. So ruler on the notes, and then we'll get to um, uh, a trackpad finger. So ruler on the notes. I actually don't think I knew about this. So let's check this out. So I'll go to my notes. And uh, so here's a, a, a sample note I had. And you can have a ruler like when you're drawing. Okay, oh, here's a ruler. And I can just, okay, I move it around at whatever degree angle. And then can I just draw along it? Oh, for a perfectly straight line. And then I can just move it over with my fingers again. That is that is cool. I did not know that was in here. Cool. Thanks for that, that suggestion. Now we just need a protractor. And it tells us the degrees. That's pretty cool. Right there in Notes. So, so Notes has been updated so that you can add drawings, images. You can even add checklists. Uh, I love checklists in my notes. And this is probably the number one reason I went to Evernote. Uh, for my notes besides being able to organize. And you can organize your notes into folders now too, which is nice. Yeah, it, Felix, I agree. I was, the thing I was probably looking forward to the most is when you're on lowercase now, these buttons are actually shown as lowercase. And then when the shift is on, they're uppercase. We had this technology back in the Palm Pilot days, and now we have it again. Um, oh, somebody's Periscope is not working in iOS 9? Um, I'm running uh, off my phone here, uh, Periscope on iOS 9, so maybe it's affecting certain devices. I know there's some goofiness happening with the new update to Periscope and the keyboard and horizontal video, but um, isn't uh, horizontal video pretty cool? Because I tried doing this in front of my TV uh, before we could do horizontal video very well in Periscope, and it just it didn't look great. So I love being able to be a weatherman now and stand in front of stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you taught somebody new all the way from Australia. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so here's the, the cursor thing is pretty neat. When I put down uh, two fingers on my keyboard, then it, the keyboard blanks out because it becomes a trackpad and I can move my cursor around. Do you see where my, my, my cursor, whoa, my big cursor there. Let's go. I don't know what just happened there. Oh, because it's part of an image, maybe. So now I can move this around my screen. So a lot easier. I mean, you can still touch and hold exactly where you want and get the loop, but two fingers. This is an iPad-only feature. Um, try as you might on your iPhone, unless you have an iPhone 6S or 6S Plus, the new ones will let you do that with a forced touch. So um, that's something to know. You might see on the keyboard here, we have some formatting options that appear and uh, where you can add a picture or video right to your notes. So uh, notes got kind of a, a makeover. Uh, here's something that, that whenever I work with people who are new to iOS and they're from Android, they always want the back button. So the, the back button here, let's say I have this email and I sent myself a link. You know, I email myself more than anybody else ever. I'm always emailing myself, but it opens up the page and then up here, it actually has a back arrow and it says back to mail. So I can click that and it goes, takes me right back to that previous app. So if one app sends you to another, you have a quick way to jump back. Uh, so that's pretty handy. It, it, to me, it seems kind of awkward because I'm used to like it, you know, just saying, <laughs> having, an, uh, you know, no buttons there. That's usually not a button, but, but it's a handy feature. And if they have to put a back button somewhere, I guess that's a good spot. What, what else do you got? What other tips have you, have you discovered through iOS 9? Yeah, then you can't see your Wi-Fi signal. So I have no idea. Am I on Wi-Fi? Am I on, uh, uh, I have, I have uh, 
uh, 4G on this one. Oh, and there is, there's a setting in there too where you can have, if the Wi-Fi is really bad and you do have 4G, whether it's a cellular iPad or iPhone, it will then switch back over to your 4G if, you're, if your Wi-Fi is really bad. Um, that's something that I manually have to do, like at my gym a lot. They have bad Wi-Fi there. Sometimes it's good, but then I have to turn it on and off myself. I guess my device will, will manage that. So you're saying photos scroll. Let's, uh, let's explore the, the, the photos app here and see what, what's new. Here's a, so how they, do they scroll differently? There's, there's a tower that my son Connor built this morning. Um, oh, photos quit on you. Yeah, I, th there's, there, there might be some, some problems with, with quitting. Well, well, one thing I do know that's new in photos is when you select photos, you know, you used to have to tap, tap, tap. If you want to select a lot, you just start at one and drag your finger. No, let me select one and then drag your finger. Oh, there we go. All the way across. And now they all have check marks on them instead of having to do one at a time. This will help you delete, mass delete photos. All right. And I know many of you have to do that because you're out of room or you work with others who have a full iPad and uh, they just need to delete all those extra photos. Now you can just uh, touch and drag to select multiple photos. Yeah, searching within the settings, just pull down in the settings app. That is one of my very favorites. Um, and I think probably Siri can, can search in settings too. So let's see, uh, um, if, let's, let's ask her. Open Siri settings. All right, and uh, she took me there. So that was really nice of her. <laughs> uh, something else in, in Safari I, I just discovered was, uh, I don't know if you use Reading List much or not. I do, um, or the Reading View. So if you click up here on certain websites, mostly blogs, it will then give you this Reader View, which is, strips out all that extra junk and just gives you the pictures and the text. And that, that's handy in, in itself. It's been in there for the last couple of versions of iOS. But now I have uh, up here a way to change the font size. And I can change the color if you're reading in bed at night. And uh, you know, you're know you reading my blog in bed at night. Uh, you can <laughs> go through and you can change, change it so it's dark. And you can even now in reader view change which font. So um, I'm actually coming to you from Iowa. So the, uh, Iowan is a font. So I'm just gonna choose that. I don't even know if I like the font, but the name is super cool. So, so that's improved reader view. Uh, that's pretty neat. Um, something else on here that I don't know, it's kind of hard, hard to show, but uh, Apple has opened up iOS 9 to have ad blockers. And ad blockers will block out um, uh, ads. I guess they're really actually called content blockers. So you could block uh, videos from loading um, in web pages and, uh, and ads from loading. Uh, some people is kind of controversial because a lot of websites make money off their ads, so stripping them out might might be a problem. But in schools where we just can't trust what ads are going to be there, uh, it takes a few steps to set up these content blockers. Uh, but once you do, your web pages look great because the ads are all gone. <laughs> So I had this article up here. I, I was reading, reading it, uh, and it has quite a few things. Uh, I moved to having my calendar all on Google Calendar because of Google Now and how it adds things automatically to my calendar. But now if I want to, I guess I could switch back to my Apple Mail and uh, do that because now uh, in iOS 9, Calendar will go and take things from your mail and put it into, into a calendar. Uh, let's see. You can get sports scores in, in Siri, uh, the weather forecast. You can use Siri uh, uh, or the, your uh, spotlight search as a calculator. There's all these little things that they've added. Uh, and then, of course, we haven't even talked about uh, the multitasking, the split view on an iPad. Now, I've had this for a couple days, and I was, this is what I was most excited about initially, but I haven't used it a ton yet. But if I'm on a web page, I can pull over and here are eligible apps to be uh, 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 to go on the side here. So that note I was just working on, I can have my note and I can have my web page all in one. And if I want, I can slide this over and work on both. So, oh, tell me to 
photos at a place I took some. All right, how about Miami? So, Siri, show me photos I took in Miami. And, aha, uh -huh. <laughs> it's a, a lot of photos at Felix's school. And I don't know why that is coming up very blurry there. And split view is not, oh, because it's probably in photos. Split view is not mirroring to my Apple TV the same way that I see on my screen here. So, uh, but that, that tends to happen. So that's fun to see photos. And then if I have labeled people's faces uh, on my Mac, then I think Siri lets me search through those too. But I haven't, I haven't visited that in a long time on my Mac. Uh, any more tips before we wrap this up? And who's ever pink giving tons of hearts, thank you. I'm, if I could give you all those hearts back right now, I would. I'm sending, sending hearts your way. <laughs> Ah, thank you. Thank you for, for all those hearts. So um, how did I start Split View? Yeah, I'd be happy to show you. So in, in an app that, that supports it, you just pull over from the side and uh, then whatever app you'd last had in Split View would be there. I can pull down from the top and choose a different app. So if I wanted to go and then let's see, go into my Twitter, I can have Twitter there. And then Twitter happens to be an app that will support the, uh, besides the slide over, it'll support the Split View so I can have Twitter and the web page going at the same time. Oh man, so your periscopes are freezing when you, uh, when you do them. Hopefully, I don't know, this one, I, so far from what I can tell, has gone pretty well. I haven't cut out too much. Nobody's complained yet. And I, I, uh, I'll, just, I'll just end with, a, with how I have my, my setup here. Because I'm standing in front of a TV. I have my microphone. Today I'm sporting an orange uh, microphone cover. I got a set of uh, rainbow color m microphone covers, so I use different ones. Uh, yet you are right. Uh, Split View is only compatible with newer iPads. So I know there's a lot of iPad 2s out there. It won't do Split View or, or, uh, or uh, uh, the slide over. Um, iPad mini um, should the newer iPad minis. Uh, you gotta look, uh, Apple's made so many devices now, it's hard to keep track of what's going where. <laughs> you know, they should do split view on the, the 6 Plus. Felix, I ordered the, uh, the 6 Plus this time. I ordered it last time and it was too big and I exchanged it. Um, but I think I'm ready for the, for the bigger phone now. Yeah, I'm sure the Mini 4, the Mini 4 for sure will do the split view. Um, I'm just going to open up my camera here just, just for fun to show you what I have going on here. So <laughs> I have my phone on a tripod. And so that I can actually see what you're saying, like I, I shouldn't, how do I do this? Okay. <laughs> I have my phone mirrored to my iPad and then my microphone is down there. Um, here, maybe if I, if I do it this way, it makes more sense. There. <laughs> yes. All right. Just pull, pulling, pulling back the, uh, the iPad. And it, it does mean, uh, Tom, that I am ready for a bigger iPad. I'm, I'm kind of excited for the iPad Pro and, and for the pencil and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm always trying to experiment with how I set up uh, my broadcasts. So that's how I chose to do this one. It's kind of a pain to bring all this stuff out because in my office, I tried the other day just sitting in front of a computer screen, but the screen was too blurry. So, so I'm trying it this way today. Doing, I'm playing my, my weatherman role. Well, um, happy Saturday to you. I've, I've got to get going because uh, my family, we're going to a play tonight. We're going to see Pete the Cat. So Connor and Ellie are super excited. We've been reading all the Pete the Cat books we can uh, to get ready for tonight. So um, thanks. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>